would you define success? You know, contrary to the world's definition, which is fame and promotion, you know, power, true success really and truly is about becoming the person that God wants you to be. And each of us, he's got a plan for us. And he wants us to be intentional and persistent in finding out what that plan is. God has a wonderful plan for blessing, for fulfillment. And part of his plan is that we will live with this intention to, to not give up, to be steadfast in pursuing him. And his guidance will become clear as we study his, his word, as we pray, as we seek godly counsel. So does your definition of success align with God's word? Well, that's what we're going to unpack tonight, the topic of success on purpose. Join me in prayer as we unpack some of these key takeaways that God gave me to share with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is revealing and just showing us the plans, the purposes that you have for us. And as we go about your plan, we'll experience a success and a blessing far over and above anything we could ever hope or imagine. So, Father, with the help of your Holy Spirit, reveal to us tonight, we're making time to have you show us what it is that you have for us at this time in season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I had someone call me uh, this afternoon seeking guidance, direction. And as we talked about and, and just explored some possibilities, this question came and I find myself asking it pretty regularly. And that is, what does success look like for you? And as we were talking about uh, that particular kind of perspective, what it feels like, what it looks like, I was really proud of her for revealing that as she's been in the secret place with God, he's, it's like the fog has begun to, to lift and she's gotten some clarity of the next steps that God has for her. You see, Proverbs 16.3 reminds us as we commit our work to the Lord, as we submit and trust them wholly to him, our plans will succeed if we respond to his will and his guidance. And it's all about responding to him because he knows what it's going to take for us to succeed. Now, as a parent, and I was young at that, there was a lot of learning uh, in that process. I had a son, I had a daughter, but the two of them were so different. And as we're getting ready to celebrate their birthdays in December, that realization is just coming back to me in waves. And I remember asking God, show me how to be the parent they need because their gifts, their interests were, were so different. Even how they wanted to learn to do things came from a different pr approach. And with the hope of the Holy Spirit, I was able to begin to realize what it would take to motivate and stir within them the ability uh, to achieve certain goals. And it reminded me of tonight's topic, success on purpose. Now, if I wasn't seeking God's plan, if I wasn't asking for that wisdom, I might have missed out on the effectiveness of training up my children in the way that they should go so that they will not depart on from it. You and I, we have a, a great daddy God who knows what it takes to motivate us, to inspire us, to realize our purpose. And he's given us the help of the Holy Spirit who will give us the self-control and the patience so that we'll be persistent to pursue the full life that God has for us. In success, we have to be reminded it looks different for all of us. Our gifts are different. Our purposes are different. 
And we need to stay aligned with what it is that God has for us. Success is defined this way. It's the accomplishment or aim of a purpose. Think about that. An aim of a purpose. Success on purpose. You can't realize success without first understanding you have a purpose. You have a plan that God has instilled within you. So I believe that each of us have this unique and specific purpose given by God. And it goes beyond simply just being a good mom or being diligent in the workplace. I think God has a purpose for every conversation and each encounter that comes our way. In fact, he reminds us to be intentional with our time. He wants us to be purposeful in every moment. And when we are seeking him, when we're looking to him, he will order our steps and make them sure. I love how Proverbs 16, 3 reminds us that as we commit these works, as we commit our life before him, he'll cause our plans to succeed. Again, it's success on purpose. And success, it comes from God. Deuteronomy 8, 18 reminds us that remember the Lord your God. He's the one who gives you the power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant. He gives us the power to be successful. So when we are pursuing God's purpose for our life, it is being in the center of God's will. It is being obedient to what his spirit is leading and, and, and just revealing to us. Because the Holy Spirit's our counselor. He's our helper. He's our strengthener. He wants to help direct our steps and make them sure. In fact, I often would say to my children growing up, he's the GPS of our life. In that day, it was before we had cell phones or even cars that had the capability of, of directing us. We had a map that we would open up, and I was so excited when ultimately we had this little GPS gadget we could put in our car and plug in addresses, and it would help guide us and direct us so much easier. But as we get in his word, as we continue to pray and seek godly counsel, the clarity and the depth from glory to glory will be able to have the discernment needed to pursue the life that God it has made available for us. And there is something freeing about recognizing that God, he is the one that exalts us. He is the one who will lead us. We're not alone in this journey. He's with us each and every step of the way. And it's all about his timing. It's all about his way. And success, as defined by the world, it might be financial provision or fame or, or reaching certain milestones like buying a home. But in God's perspective, he's a giver of good things. He knows when to give us those good things. He has a timing. And as James 1.17 reminds us, he is that good daddy. He gives good gifts. But when those gifts are then provided, we need to be a good steward of it as well in life. He will promote us. He will provide for us. He wants us to keep focused on his will. For our lives. Now, I remember sharing with my children growing up how important it was. You know, God's grace is there. He's forgiving. But how much better to uh, really seek him each and every step of the way. And though David was repentant and God forgave him, but there were consequences to certain actions and decisions and choices he made, which caused a rift in his family. And a division that, you know, he had to sometimes escape for his life because of a son that was pursuing after him and wanting to take the throne and that position of kingship. 
And you and I, God is wanting us to avoid uh, certain consequences by giving us the wise counsel that we need, which reminds me of this fact, is that success requires surrender. I mean, think about King Solomon. King Solomon was invited by God to ask for anything. And when um, Solomon was given that offer, he asked for wisdom to lead God's people. And 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 1, verses 11 through 12 says this, God replied with these words, because your greatest desire is to help your people, that you haven't asked for personal wealth, honor, you haven't asked me to curse your enemies, you haven't asked me for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to properly guide my people. Yes, I am giving you the wisdom and the knowledge you ask for, but God doesn't stop there. Let's continue. He says, I am also giving you riches, wealth, honor, such as no other king has ever had before you. And there will never again be so great a king in all of the world. You see, when we surrender our life to God, when we ask for his wisdom, his knowledge, everything else will be given unto us. And Ephesians 3, 20 says, he'll even do immensely more than we could ever hope or imagine as we walk with him and as we rely on him. So as we pursue success, think about Matthew 6.33. But seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom, his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given to you besides. So as we aim for God's purpose for our lives, it does require a surrender. Seek first. It's a desire. It's wanting to know what God's plan is. And when we surrender to that plan, when we submit obediently to it, there are benefits. There are blessings. I do believe God loves giving his children good gifts. And we've all experienced God's unmistakable favor in our life. I want to encourage you tonight as you continue to pursue God's plan. It's going to require action as we lay down our life for him. It's not an easy task, but it's certainly a worthwhile one. And pursuing success, it looks different for each of us because it will require us to seek God's purpose in our current season with what he's asked of us to do. But as we remember in Matthew 6, we should seek first the kingdom of God. Aim after God's purpose for our life. And when we do, blessings will come our way. So be intentional. Success on purpose. That is the invitation that God is offering you and me. He's wanting us to remember he gives the power to be successful. He's wanting us to ask the right questions, as in seek first the kingdom of God. Ask for his wisdom, knowing that all things will be added unto us. And as we commit our works to the Lord, as we submit and trust them to him, our plans will succeed. May these words encourage you tonight. I feel like as we're finishing strong, as we're wrapping up this year of 2024, God wants us to finish strong and finish well and even begin to look to the horizon of what 2025 has to offer because he's starting to give us inklings and beginning to stir the possibilities that await us. And he's inviting us even now to seek him and to obey him. Well, may God's blessings continue to be multiplied in your life 
and I'll look forward to catching up with you next week. Have a good night.